from Southern Colorado's High Definition News Leader. This is News Channel 13, where the news comes first. The growing crisis in Iraq has people in southern Colorado on edge. The local fears and concerns about U.S. involvement. And two elected leaders, two recalls, two years. We're tracking the political pulse in southern Colorado. A battle over privacy protection plays out in the Supreme Court. The decision over cell phones will have an impact across the country. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm James Jarman. And I'm Heather Scold. There's an allied interest in having a unity government in Iraq. That is the word tonight from Secretary, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry. He says part of the solution is the fight against ISIS, and that is to form a unity government, one that includes more Sunnis. Right now, 90 U.S. military advisors are in Iraq. Eventually, there will be about 300, and with the Sunni extremists pushing toward Baghdad, the U.S. weighing its options, the local Muslim community is keeping a close eye on all of it. Cardio News Channel 13's Eric Fink spoke with a Pakistani national and a professor who studied the Middle East for years. Eric joins us live in our newsplex, and we understand they don't think the U.S. should get involved. Heather James, they don't. Both of these men say we should stay out of it. They say the fighting's due to deep religious divisions in the Middle East, and the U.S. can't fix that. As Sunni ISIS militants continue to topple what the United States spent more than a decade in a war trying to build, here at home, the Muslim community watches the sectarian violence in Iraq with grave concerns. Pakistani Arsad Yusufi says the Sunnis, the Shiites, and the Kurds cannot coexist in Iraq, as evidenced by the killing and the violence that's unfolding. The problem is the existing strategy needs to change. We could get by without, without intervening with boots on the ground if we get the right constitution in place that guarantees the Sunnis a degree of autonomy like the Kurds already have. ISIS is exclusively Sunni. The Maliki government that's in peril is Shiite. President Obama has pledged not to send combat forces. And Colorado College political science professor David Hendrickson, who wrote a recent essay on the Iraq Civil War, says America can't afford to go back. We tried to build this state after smashing it. And uh, have not been successful in that enterprise. And there, there's, there are limits to American influence to shape the outcome in Iraq. As Muslims at the Islamic Society in the Springs pray for the innocent victims, local families are too afraid to speak out. Iraq is not like America where you have freedom of speech. So if they say something that's perceived negatively by any one of those groups, Sunni, Shia, or, or the government, there can be severe repercussions for the family that they've left behind because, you know, they, they, they will be traced and their family might even get killed. And Yusufi says trying to combine the Sunnis, the Shiites and Kurds into one state in Iraq is impossible. Live tonight in the Newsplex, Eric Fink. KRDO News Channel 13. Thanks so much, Eric. And Secretary of State John Kerry says the U.S. is closely watching, obviously, to make sure any new political process does not repeat the past mistakes, excluding Iraq's minorities.